All right, thanks for watching. And today I wanna to talk about the finite intersection property, which is very useful in analysis and even all of topology. And it's a very natural generalization of the Cantor intersection theorem. So suppose you have a family of closed subsets with what's called the finite intersection property, which just means that whenever you take the intersection of finitely many of those f alphas, then you have a non-empty intersection. So here, if you take the intersection of two of those f alphas, then you have something non-empty, but also here you have something non-empty, and here you have something non-empty. That's what's called the finite intersection property. So definition, we say, a family F alpha of non empty and closed subsets of so think the real numbers or any metric space or even any topological space. So of closed subsets of M has the finite intersection property, so FIP, if the intersection of finitely many uh, elements of that family is non-empty. Of finitely many. want f alpha 1 up to f alpha n is non-empty. Okay. So just like here, and um, before I move on, as I said, this is a very natural generalization of the uh, Cantor intersection theorem, and in fact, and let me remind you what it says. Well, in fact, the sets in the Cantor intersection theorem satisfy this finite intersection property. So for instance, take M to be R okay, and F1 intersect F2 intersect blah, blah, blah is uh, any nested sequence of non-empty closed and bounded uh, subsets of R. And closed and bounded subsets of R. Again, we, we don't need it to be bounded, but it's just the way the theorem is stated is like that. And why does it have the finite intersection property? Because think of it as follows. So this is F1, F2, F3, F4, etc., etc. In general, Fn, and maybe smaller, smaller things. Okay. Well, here's the thing. If you take the intersection of finitely many of those, let's take F1, F3, and F4, it is always equal to F of the bigger one of those indices. So here, the intersection of F1, F3, and F4 is just F4, and F4 is non-empty. That's why the intersection of finitely many of those Fn's is non-empty. Now, um, What's the main problem? So what's the main question that people try to answer with the finite intersection property? Well, the main question is, suppose you have a system like that, where the intersection of finitely many of those F alphas is non-empty, is it or is it not true that the grand intersection is non-empty? In fact, one of the results, the main result of the Cantor intersection theorem was that the grand intersection is non-empty. And, well, it's 
it's not always true if the sets are open, for instance, so if like, the sets are not closed, but it turns out we will show, well, it's kind of always true. So, and in particular, the first thing we'll show today that if your space is compact, then it is true. So fact, so fact one, if M is compact, then any family satisfying, so any family F alpha satisfying the finite intersection property uh, is non-empty, has non-empty intersection, has the intersection of alpha F alpha to be non-empty. And just a little, so therefore, for instance, the, the set in the Kanto intersection theorem is non-empty, little issue, uh, technically R is not compact, but all the Fn's, they are a subset of F1, which is compact. So if we apply uh, this theorem, this fact to the F1, then in fact you get that the grand intersection is non-empty. So a corollary of this is the Kanto intersection theorem. And let's prove this. And in fact, by the way, I asked this on the exam when, uh, to my anal analysis students. They didn't like it as much as I did, but it's still a fun problem. Hopefully you will like it. So proof, um, suppose you have a family like that. So um, suppose, the family F alpha, remember, non-empty and closed satisfies the finite intersection property. But suppose that the intersection is empty. The intersection of F alpha is empty, and we want to find a contradiction. And so remember, M is compact, so we want to talk about open covers. Well, how can we find open sets here? Well, remember F alpha is closed, so F alpha complement is open. So consider U to be F alpha complement. Okay. Well, this thing is open. And moreover, if you take the union of all the F alphas, the union of from, um, what do I want to say? Yeah, uh, of all the alphas of F alpha complement, well, by remember the De Morgan's law, that is the intersection of alpha of F alpha complement. So if you're not in all of them at the same time, then at some time you're not in one of them. Okay. However, we know the intersection of all the F alphas is empty, so this is empty complement, and we get that this is all of M. So what do we have? We actually get that U covers all of M. So U So therefore, we get the covering of M with open subsets. So bang, by compactness, we, this has a finite subcover. So since M is compact, U has a finite subcover. Let's say F alpha one complement, F alpha two complement, etc., etc. So um, this thing F so V, that's called F alpha one complement, F alpha two complement, da da da, F let's say alpha n complement. But then what does that mean? It means that well M is included in the union of all those F alphas, so I from one to N of F alpha I complement 
But again, by De Morgan's law, that's the same thing as the intersection from i from 1 to n of f alpha i. Complement. So what do we get? Well, m is included in this complement, and I want to remind you that if a is a subset of b, then b complement is a subset of a complement. Because if you're not in b, you're definitely not in a. So since m is in the intersection complement, this means that the intersection m of f alpha i is included in m complement, which is just the empty set. But then we have a problem. The intersection is included in the empty set, so the intersection is empty. So the intersection from 1 to n of f alpha i is empty. But that clearly violates the finite intersection property. Because remember, f alpha was the system such that the intersection of finitely many of the f alphas is non empty. So, here, direct contradiction with the definition of the finite intersection property. Therefore, if it's compact, then uh, it has a finite intersection property. And here's the even more beautiful proof. Uh, the more beautiful fact is that it's actually equivalent to being compact. So fact two, okay. um, if, uh, so M is a space, this one is a space such that for any family F alpha, again, of non-empty closed subset of M that satisfies that the intersection that it satisfies F I P we have uh, if it's, if we have that the interest grand intersection is non empty then M is compact. By the way, this does not contradict the Kanto intersection theorem because Kanto intersection theorem was one example of such a system that had non-empty intersection. But really, you're saying all the systems with that that have non-empty intersection. Okay. So, and how do you prove this? Well, suppose we have this, but M is not compact. So, proof. Again, suppose. Uh, star is true, so this is star. So M is a space such that for any family that has the finite intersection property, we have this is non-empty, but M is not compact. And what does not compactness mean? It means that there is some cover that has no finite subcover. So there is a cover a cover U, which again is just a cover of um, finite sub so open uh, subsets here that has no has there's a cover that has no finite subcover. No finite subcover, and then we want to uh, find a contradiction. Now, uh, this is um, what's called. This is a family of open sets. Remember, the finite intersection property has to do with closed sets. So, how can we find closed sets? Well, just consider the complement. So, let consider the following thing. Uh, this thing. So the family of U alpha complement. So this is closed 
And it's also non-empty, because if, if one of those is empty, then u alpha would be all of m, which would cover uh, m. So it would have a subcover with just one element. So it's closed and non-empty. Now, we want to show that the set uh, satisfies a finite intersection property. So show that uh, the set of u alpha complement satisfies finite intersection property, but then for finitely many, many, let's say, u alpha 1 complement, dot, 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 u alpha n complement, what do we have? The intersection, sorry, the intersection from 1 to n of u alpha i complement by, again, the de Morgan's law, that is a union from 1 to n of u alpha i complement. The question is, could it be empty? Well, if it were empty, this would imply that the union of the u alpha i's would be empty complement, which is m, but then this would imply that if you take the cover, so you know, if you take the sets u alpha 1 to u alpha m, that would cover m. Because the union would be all of them. But that's a contradiction. Because we assume that u does not have a, a finite subcover. Therefore, we actually get that this thing is non-empty which implies that the intersection of this is not empty. So in fact, we get that this set satisfies the finite intersection property, and therefore by assumption, the intersection of the u alphas is not empty. So the intersection of the u alpha complements is not empty, but then that's a problem, because what is that? So we know in particular that if you take the union of um, the same thing, it's just the same thing as the union of u alpha complement, okay, that is non-empty. But since this is non-empty, the union of u alpha cannot be all of m. Because if it were all of them, then the complement would be empty, which is a contradiction. But uh, this contradicts the fact that u covers m. And it's a contradiction with what? The contradiction with the assumption that u does not have a finite subcover, therefore u has a finite subcover, and since u was arbitrary, we get that m is compact. So u has a finite subcover. And therefore m is compact. Awesome. I really love this proof because it's so elegant. You see, it doesn't use any metric spaces. It's purely topological. So it's really the essence of math in some sense. Um, all right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.